Also worth a mention is Amazon's SageMaker services. SageMaker is a component of Amazon Web Services, and it allows you to create notebooks hosted on AWS that can train large-scale models in the cloud, and then vend predictions from that model from the cloud as well. It's an easy way to get some serious computing horsepower behind your recommender system in an on-demand manner. And it comes with some useful algorithms for recommender systems, too. Using SageMaker involves three steps. Building your model, training your model, and deploying your model. Let's start with building. It's pretty easy to start using SageMaker. You just push a button in the AWS console to start a new notebook instance, and a hosted Jupyter Notebook environment will be spun up for you with access to all of SageMaker's built-in algorithms available to you. You can spin up environments that include most any deep learning framework that you want to use as well, such as TensorFlow or Apache's MXNet. You use that notebook to build your model, in our case, a recommender system algorithm. You can kick off the training of your model from that same notebook or from the AWS console by setting up a training job. Your training and test data need to be in a specific format called protobuf, but Amazon provides utilities that make it easy to convert your data into this, much like it was easy to prepare your data for use in Destiny. One neat feature of SageMaker is that you can also set up hyperparameter tuning jobs, which will automatically run a series of cross-validation tests to converge on the best parameters for your model. And this training can be distributed. AWS will spin up as many machines as you want and train your model in parallel across them. This isn't free, of course. That computer time costs real money. Finally, you place your trained and tuned model into production with the deploy step. This also spins up one or more servers in AWS that will make predictions on demand using your model. Again, this too is not free. You'll be charged for computer time for as long as your model is deployed, so you need to remember to shut down your model's deployment when you're done with it, or you'll have a nasty surprise on your credit card bill at the end of the month. I won't say using SageMaker is simple, but we can walk through an example that will at least help make more sense of it. If you remember back to our matrix factorization section, we talked about an algorithm called factorization machines, which is a more general purpose means of factorizing sparse matrices, such as the user movie ratings matrix we have with our movie lens data. SageMaker includes an implementation of factorization machines, so this is our chance to finally try them out. And since we're on the cloud with AWS, we can do this at a large scale. Let's walk through how we might use SageMaker to train a factorization machine model on the MovieLens 1 million rating data set. Most of the work is actually in getting the MovieLens data into a format that SageMaker can work with. Factorization machines want to work with high dimension data sets, so we need to one-hot encode each rating. Let's say we have 500 users and 1,000 movies in our data set. The idea is to encode ratings as 1,500 binary values, where the first 500 values would represent each user, and the next 1,000 values would represent each movie. We'd only set two values in those 1,500 values to one, one for the user and one for the movie that was rated. The rest are all set to zero. All those zeros are a huge waste of space, so we use a sparse tensor to store each one-hot encoded rating in a much more compact format. We also need a vector of labels to train with, indicating whether this specific rating for a given user movie pair indicated that the user liked the movie or not. Somewhat arbitrarily, we'll say any rating of 4 or higher gets a label of 1, and 3 or below gets a 0. The algorithm just works best with binary values like this. Once we have our sparse ratings vectors and label vectors ready for both our training and test data sets, we convert them to the protobuf format SageMaker expects, and write them to S3, where SageMaker can access them. Once our training and test data are in the expected format and in the expected place, the rest is relatively simple. We tell SageMaker to spin up some hardware to train our factorization machine model, deploy the trained model into production, and then we can query it for specific predictions for a given user-movie combinations. Let's have a look at the code. 